Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sammy, Gray, this subject's gonna kill somebody. <laughs> We got him, we got him. They're down in the ditch. Look around. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, oh, oh. it could happen to you. Oh man, we need some help. Because desperate criminals oh, God, God. use desperate measures. No matter who gets in the way. Oh, boy. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. That's clear, I'm out of here. You'll feel the heat we have fire. of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know that to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in and could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. From the simple roadside stop to the most complex felony arrest, three people are generally involved. The crook who wants to get away, the officer who wants to stop him, and the innocent third party who just might find themselves caught in the middle. Police departments have sent us their tapes so you'll know what's going on, so you'll know what the cops are doing, and so you won't be the one caught in the middle. Gardena, California. A community in turmoil, and cameras on the ground capture the scene. A chase between officers and a juvenile car thief sends a shockwave through the suspect's neighborhood. Oh, they're just pouring out of their home. Everyone seems to be emotionally involved, especially the suspect's mother. Police try to hold her back as the pursuit races by. Traumatized by her son's criminal behavior, she collapses. But the delinquent continues raging through the streets, completely oblivious to his mother's condition. He feels confident, knowing every twist and turn in the area. These are his stomping grounds, and he intends to show officers they're not wanted. Oh no, he is. He's actually driving head on at officer. This is crazy. The young punk charges a police cruiser, forcing the officer backwards to avoid a collision. It's bad enough that the suspect is running, but blatantly threatening officers is madness. Police decide the time for action is now. One unit rams the boy's car, but he accelerates like a bullet and pulls away. Officers catch up and corner him behind a strip mall. But with the home court advantage, this suspect knows all the ins and outs. The teen pours into the parking lot, only to find police waiting for him. Somehow, he slips through and heads for the street, but officers have the exits blocked. I don't think he can get by him. I just don't think he can get by him. In brazen defiance, the suspect makes his own exit, spilling back onto the road, but he only finds more cruisers waiting for him. This has gotten really dangerous now. He treats the whole thing as a joke, even mocking police as they follow. Oh, it appears to be dancing. I don't believe this. The suspect is dancing, not taking this pursuit seriously at all. But the authorities aren't laughing. Neither are the suspect's friends and family watching the spectacle on TV. When police see an opportunity to end the dramatic pursuit, they don't hesitate. The suspect makes a turn, and officers take action. 
Oh, they almost got him there. But nearby motorists make aggressive maneuvering risky. There's a lot of traffic out at this hour. For now, officers just follow and wait. We're losing light now. This chase has gone on for well over an hour. Tension grows as the sun sets. In the dark, it's much harder to see pedestrians. As the suspect rolls from block to block, he seems to gain the support of bystanders, much to officers' dismay. And, well, they're just waving him along. But even though the citizens side with the juvenile, it's a policeman's duty to keep them safe. And with increasingly low visibility... There's the night sun. The watch commander decides to pull ground units off the chase. Police definitely backing away right now. With police out of sight, the suspect thinks he has the advantage. He hopes to lose the officers in the dark, becoming just another set of headlights on the road. You won't believe what happens next. Out of nowhere, a civilian in a pickup rams the suspect hard. Oh, no, no, that's the wrong thing to do. The civilian driver strikes a second time, and officers are forced to rejoin the chase. Well, that guy will be identified and arrested by police officers. The recent jolt has infuriated the teenage driver. He feels betrayed by the public he thought was behind him. He turns his vehicle into a four-wheeled battering ram, muscling other motorists out of his way. Just hit that vehicle. There goes the buckler. With his car falling apart and police back on his tail, the once cocky teen now heads for his neighborhood. But back at his house, things have reached a boiling point. Neighbors know the chase is coming their way. A lot of activity up ahead. When the suspect turns onto his street, he gets a big surprise, and police get a break. Flashing lights up ahead. The emergency vehicles dispatched to help the boy's ailing mother now block the suspect's path. Police move in fast to pull the juvenile out of his car. Then, all hell breaks loose. Police are suddenly caught in the middle of a spontaneous riot. The mob lashes out at the very people sent to protect them. To defuse the situation, police haul the young criminal away as quickly as possible. They're throwing him right into that squad car. Now authorities are left to organize the chaos left by one boy's rampage. When the suspect decided to run from police, he probably didn't realize the effect it would have on others. Just hit that vehicle. Chances are, it never even crossed his mind. And now his family, police, and the community will have to pick up the pieces. Orlando, Florida. A disturbed man tears up a sign on a freeway overpass. Rush hour commuters can only watch as the man grows violent, hurling pieces of the sign at nearby officers. But the officers have a plan. First they get one big rig, then another to pull right underneath the enraged man. Within moments, he jumps, losing his balance and almost going over the side. Next, Officer Mike Favorite climbs up to talk the man down. But when it's clear that the man wants a fight, Officer Favorite has to take him down. I took his legs out and we went down. And thank God my partners got there quick, so they got there to help me out. Minutes later, the man is sedated and lowered safely by stretcher. And this standoff is over. Austin, Texas. A state trooper stops a man for speeding on Interstate 35, a well-known drug trafficking route. The driver stands on the right in full cooperation with the officer. The trooper, wearing the hat, searches the truck for contraband. What happens next changes his life. A distracted motorist ricochets off the trooper's car, then slams into the pickup. The trooper is shot into the air. Amazingly, the truck's owner tumbles safely out of harm's way. 
The driver of the other car is in extreme shock. He staggers out, trying to make sense of what happened. Witnesses quickly converge on the scene. They run to the aid of the fallen trooper. What they find is nothing short of a miracle. He's coherent, he's okay. Incredibly, the trooper escapes life-threatening injuries. And I believe his leg is broke. This incident should serve all drivers as a frank reminder. Never take your eyes off the road, not even for an instant. Coming up on Police Videos, where do they think they're going? This guy is crazy. A fugitive gate crasher heads off on a field trip. An oblivious drunk goes straight for the gutter. And a four-wheel driver takes the quickest train out of town. A yeah, piece of that track just came off. There are three blind crooks. See how they run next. Crooks are always looking for an edge over law enforcement but technology is working against them, often in ways they aren't even aware. Orange County, California. Two bank robbers are on the run in this sports utility vehicle. Traffic is really moving slow, and they say, whoa! He missed hitting that car by inches. This guy is crazy. They race to put distance between themselves and the bank. Pushing their SUV to incredible speeds, they think they've made a clean getaway. But they're wrong. Bank officials have hidden microchips inside the bags of stolen money. The chips enable officers to track these crooks wherever they run. And it doesn't take long for police to catch up. Orange County deputies are close behind the suspect. I think he is just now realizing that the police are on to him. The driver of the SUV sees the flashing lights in his rearview mirror. He panics and floors the accelerator. He's doing well over 100 miles an hour in an SUV. Very dangerous. He's really pushing the limits here. The officers back off. Giving the crooks room might avoid disaster. And as long as they have the cash, police can keep tabs on them. It looks like deputies are going to give them a little bit of elbow room. But the crooks don't know they're being tracked. Thinking they can shake the officers for good, they begin to weave dangerously in and out of traffic. Growing more desperate, the driver takes greater risks. Oh, he's losing it all over the road. He hit that car. Guy is smashing into other drivers on the freeway. The driver goes from dangerous to destructive. And it doesn't even slow him down. Then the suspect tries an old trick police know only too well. He cuts across two lanes of traffic in a split-second attempt to exit the freeway. Wait a minute, he's off the road. The suspect hits the ramp too fast and goes flying into the embankment. They're off the road, they've hit the lead, the SUV looks like they've come to a stop. Even a vehicle this powerful can't handle the steep incline. The tires spin in the grass, but it's useless. This might be it. The SUV has come to a complete stop. The robbers bail out, but in their greed, they take the cash and the tracking device with them. Suspect still has a full bag of cash, and now he's headed for the road. The driver makes a desperate attempt to hijack a new getaway car, but the civilian will have none of it. Driver took off. Driver's gone. A wise decision on his part. With helicopters dogging their every move, the suspect split up to divide police forces. But the officers follow them, using the signal from the microchip. He's going deeper now, deeper into the brush now. One of them is apprehended quickly. The helicopter spots the other as he reaches the highway. Too exhausted to keep running, the suspect slows to a walk. He seems to know it's all over, and police arrest him moments later. These two robbers thought they were home free. Oh, missed the car by just inches. But police kept track of them with a high-tech bloodhound. He's off the road, off the road, he's in the weed. That never gets tired and never gives up. Des Moines, Iowa. 
Officer Donna Brooks chases a suspect who has a history of criminal activity. 42, what are we chasing this car for? Uh, right now, possible uh, stolen property in it, and uh, given the history, uh, possible lamp material. The officers fear he has flammable materials on board, making bumps like these potentially explosive. It's no wonder he's already lost some hardware. This gentleman lost a toolbox, a big toolbox, and you make sure that's picked up Back on paved roads, the suspect makes a dangerous turn. Moments later, he suddenly stops in the middle of the highway and plows through a fence right into a vacant field. Rocks and gravel pelt the officer's windshield as she trudges on. Another officer joins this rough ride. Officer Brooks gets right back on the road. The suspect turns around. I'm coming up right behind you. And tries to slam into another fence. He broke through another fence. It looks like he might be stuck. But this time, he gets bogged down in the mud. Stand by. Moments later, this career criminal is back in custody. There are code six on the scene. This chronic offender thought he'd make a run for it. But after bumping and bouncing and barreling over anything in his way, he finally found himself fenced in. It looks like he might be stuck. For good. Stand by. Coming up on police videos. It happens when you least expect it. Oh, look out! The most calculated drivers. Speeds 100 miles an hour. Crash into disaster. And the clearest roads can spawn catastrophe. Anything can happen. I just want to make sure you don't have any weapons on it. At any time. When a drunk gets behind the wheel of a car, he thinks he's in control. But once alcohol has entered your system, you lose your sense of speed, you can't judge distance, and you don't react as quick as you do when you're sober. Lancaster, Ohio. Sergeant Tom Dean of the Highway Patrol trails a car that's reportedly been swerving all over the road. Blue Pontiac, one white male occupant. The driver is apparently so loaded, it takes him a moment to notice when a stoplight turns from red to green. Finally, he gets moving again, as unsteadily as ever. The officer has seen enough. It's time to take this suspected drunk driver off the road. The man seems oblivious to the officer, even after Sergeant Dean turns on his lights. But that's not all this guy is too obliterated to notice. The man plows into the back end of an 18-wheeler. Debris showers the pavement. The squad car breaks to avoid the mess. The smashed up car lurches past the sergeant. The suspect steers the mangled wreck onto the shoulder. Sergeant Dean goes to check the severity of the suspect's physical injuries. My chest and my neck, but you want me to call squad? Then he checks the man's level of inebriation. Can you say you've just had a couple things to drink tonight? Couple drinks. The man has obviously had more than that. What you got in your pocket, Dan? Just want to make sure you don't have any weapons on you. Do I have any weapons? That's what I'm asking you. Okay. I got a hanky. Sergeant Dean takes the suspect into custody. It turns out the man has been arrested for DUI five times before. It's the perfect portrait of the repeat offender. No matter how obvious their transgressions, they don't see the air of their way. Until it's too late. When you have a bird's eye view of crooks on the run and you see the insane lengths they're willing to go to get away, you realize what a great tool the helicopter really is. El Reno, Oklahoma. A man wanted for first degree kidnapping plows through a field. There aren't any patrol cars around, and with good reason. 
it has been an extremely dangerous chase so far. There are officers down. Earlier in the pursuit, the suspect wrecked four police cruisers. Now officers choose a much safer method of pursuit. They let the helicopter do the chasing. We'll stick right with him. We'll stick with him. The suspect cuts his way back onto the road. Once more on solid ground, he increases his speed. We're going maybe 60 miles an hour now. Even though there's no one behind or in front of the man, he suddenly veers right. Through a fence, just busted right through that fence. Again, the suspect tears a path through a surrounding field. He spins like a loose cannon, churning up dirt and debris. At this point, I'm not sure who this guy thinks he's out running. But this madman doesn't stay in one spot for long. He leaves the pasture and hits the pavement. No, 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 going the wrong way in traffic. He barrels down the opposing shoulder, just missing a semi. To keep other motorists safe, an unmarked police car is forced to rejoin the chase. Okay, looks like units may be getting back into it. But the felon is just as crazed as ever. He heads for the one route he knows officers won't follow. There's a train crossing up ahead. Oh no, he's getting on. The suspect charges onto the railroad tracks. Each beam he crosses jars the truck a little more. He just lost the tailgate. To think this is an effective method of escape is crazy, but the driver defies logic and continues clattering down the tracks. The helicopter pilot watches in disbelief as the maniac rattles over a narrow bridge. Okay, a piece of that track just came off. Before long, the constant pounding of riding the rails takes its toll. He's slowing, he's slowing way down. The vehicle's tires have shredded and the engine is spent. The truck is dead. But the suspect isn't about to quit. He takes off on foot. We'll continue following him. He dashes across the open range finding a patch of thick brush where he tries to blend in. Where'd he go? There he is. But it soon becomes obvious that his cover is useless. The suspect decides to keep moving, this time through a shallow creek. Eventually, the man reaches the one boundary he can't get past, exhaustion. I think he's actually waving at us now. The weary runner throws his hands up and waits for his inevitable arrest. We have radioed the police. They are moving in now. Officers converge on the fugitive, and finally, he has nowhere to go. Suspect in custody. He tried everything. Just busted through that fence. Went everywhere. Oh, no, he's getting on. And put everyone in danger. There are officers down. But no matter what insane lengths he went to in avoiding police, we'll stick right with him. He still ends up right where he belonged, under arrest. Still to come, on police video, innocent people in the crossfire. Complete disregard for anyone's safety. When an unsuspecting mother gets caught in the path of a madman. There was a child in the vehicle. When a terrified family is held captive by their own father. And when rush hour traffic comes head to head with a speeding bullet. They're in the wrong place. He shut off his headlights at the wrong time. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. There's a reason for the speed limit, because even when things seem perfectly safe, disaster can strike. Stockholm, Sweden. An officer on routine patrol is suddenly passed by a speedy motorist. Before the chase can begin, it's over. A defective back tire explodes, making the car impossible to maneuver at these speeds. The vehicle flies off the road, hits a ditch, and flips end over end through the air. Officers investigate the scene. Incredibly, the driver walks away injury-free. He wasn't a fugitive, just a man in a hurry. He's lucky that his haste only cost him his car. 
When a person commits a crime, they not only put themselves in danger, but they endanger everyone else around them. And a bad guy will bring his own family into harm's way without even thinking twice about it. Littlefield, Texas, a known burglar with a truck full of goods, has just crossed the state line from New Mexico. The man hits a spike strip put down moments earlier by the Littlefield police. His two right tires quickly tear apart and begin to smoke. With his vehicle in this condition, the smart decision would be surrender to authorities. But for this determined criminal, giving up is the last thing on his mind. The man tries to shake the officers by swerving across the median. Amazingly, his truck maintains traction on the Texas hard scrabble. He suddenly finds himself heading into oncoming traffic. Struggling to keep control of the truck, he makes another sharp turn. Back on the right side of the freeway, officers decide to take a calculated risk. They pull up beside the truck and shoot out the remaining tires. The overloaded truck can't hold the highway. Swerving out of control, the suspect skids sideways and plows into a gully. With all four tires torn to rag, the suspect's truck pelts the cruiser with debris. The truck fishtails dangerously, sending the suspect skidding into the median once more. As the suspect crosses in front of the cruiser's headlights, officers make a stunning discovery. From the cab of the truck, the terrified faces of the man's entire family plead for help. Amazingly, this man is actually fleeing police with his own wife and four children held captive. The chilling information is spread to other officers. With four flat tires, the damaged truck is nearly impossible to control. But somehow, this crazed suspect still thinks he can get away. The frightened children beg their father to stop and let them out of the vehicle. The truck spins across the median again. Officers stick close to the suspect despite a blinding cloud of dust. Finally, the wrecked truck can go no further. The doors burst open, and the terrified family scrambles out of the crippled vehicle. Children run to safety as officers move in to arrest the driver. Although she's frightened, the mother refuses to leave without her youngest, no more than an infant. Officers pull the suspect from his truck before he can cause any more turmoil. This traumatized family is finally out of harm's way, and this deranged father is now in the hands of the police. Frightening as this chase was for everyone involved, police couldn't have asked for a better ending. After all, a man this reckless with his own flesh and blood wouldn't have thought twice about hurting anyone. Up next, watch it, watch it. on police videos, turf wars rage out of control. A protest against the bomb. The French go home. Pits nation against nation. And a stalker on city streets. Officers are not faced by this. Faces off against hometown cops. The claims are staked. The lines are drawn. Next. The aftermath of a riot. Over the years, I've learned all riots have one thing in common. When they're over, there's always a mess. Papayete, Tahiti, the capital of French Polynesia, is in a state of civil unrest. This land is our land, not the French land. Tahitian natives have been rallying against authorities for days. They vehemently oppose France's nuclear testing off the coast of their homeland. They push that button. The bomb will explode. The Tahitian bomb will explode too. The nation are fed up with you guys. That's why we say French, go home with your bomb. Protesters come from all over the island to storm the city's airport. They plant themselves on the tarmac, preventing any planes from taking off or landing. 
French officers plead with the people to leave the area. But the demonstrators refused to budge. To them, keeping quiet would be an abomination, as bad as the one they protest. So when riot police finally arrive, things turn ugly. The factions collide, neither willing to back down. The protesters see this issue as one of life and death. Officers soon find themselves outnumbered. The elite Foreign Legion is called in to assist. Tear gas is fired into the crowd. Eventually, the people disperse from the area. But the situation is far from over. As the conflict rages into the night, some of the more radical demonstrators move into the city. The once political protest turns into a full-on mob riot. Fanatical citizens waste no time looting and gutting local stores. Buildings are set ablaze. The fires quickly grow out of control. Again, police are outnumbered and few arrests are made. But many of the town's people, disappointed with the violent outcome of their protest, take it upon themselves to restore order. They wanted to send a clear message of resistance, but not by destroying their own land. The stance they made was one they truly believed in. This land is owning. But when it got out of hand, somewhere in the middle, the cause got lost. And for now, instead of focusing on the issue, both sides will have to focus their energy on cleaning up the mess. Stalkers represent a particular problem for police because as long as they're at large, their victims live in constant fear. So officers will go to extraordinary lengths to get those predators off the street. Los Angeles, California. A month ago, the man in this blazer held a gun to his girlfriend's head and threatened to kill her. The driver has been taking some real chances here. For nearly 30 days, he's evaded capture. But tonight, he was seen stalking the same South LA neighborhood. Sheriff's officers moved in before the man could hurt anyone, and he quickly fled the scene. This guy's showing no regard for public safety. The cops know they have to capture this unpredictable felon now before he can find his ex-girlfriend and carry out his deadly threat. Officers consider him dangerous. He's used a gun before and may be armed now. But this suspect seems to think he can just disappear into the night. He shut off his headlights and this is very dangerous. With his lights off, he's invisible to other drivers, leaving them unaware of the lethal menace barreling toward them. And now he's picking up speed. But even in darkness, the cops keep their sights on this very dangerous suspect. Officers are not phased by this. They will stay with him. The blacked out blazer swerves through traffic, then cuts in front of this startled driver with mere inches to spare. Still picking up speed, accelerating all over the road. Unable to shake police, the suspect plows through a narrow freeway off-ramp. Oh, watch it, watch it! And nearly causes an accident. He brazenly races into oncoming traffic, using the larger SUV to bully other drivers out of his way. Oh, uh, we have never seen... This guy has complete disregard for anyone's safety. The cops know they can't give up on this chase. They have no intention of allowing this stalker to continue his reign of terror. Police might have pulled back, but remember, this guy is known to be dangerous and may be armed now. Time and again, the pursuing officer closes on the suspect's vehicle. He's ramming him. Oh, it didn't work. Guy's still going. Finally, the officer gets close enough to ram the bumper of the fleeing SUV. Officers, try it again. They've got to take this suspect out somehow. But the squad car is no match for the monstrous road hog. The blazer speeds away. Oh, OK, he slipped out once again. But I don't, the officers are not going to give up right now. The suspect rides the yellow line, endangering vehicles traveling in both directions. He's still not stopping. Then, at an intersection, he makes a sudden turn and almost crashes into two oncoming trucks. Oh, he almost turns right into them. The suspect continues to tempt fate with every near miss. He's been lucky so far. He, he's still at it. But his luck is about to run out. Oh, look out! The suspect plows into the side of a stopped vehicle.
the officer stops his escape attempt dead in its tracks. The suspect guns the accelerator. The squad car burns rubber on the pavement, but it holds its ground. This suspect is going nowhere. Okay, police have the drop on him now. As officers move in, the driver of the other car, a terrified mother, grabs her daughter and rushes to safety. Oh no, there was a child in the vehicle. This man ruthlessly stalked his defenseless ex-girlfriend, but with several officers pointing their sidearms at him, this gun-wielding bully isn't so tough anymore. Suspect down, suspect is down. Police can now take him into custody. It looks like it's finally over. When this dangerous stalker tried to push his luck on the road. Watch it, watch it. The California Highway Patrol pushed right back. And the savage hunter found himself caught in the trap. The trooper isn't gonna sit still for this. And thanks to the focus and determination of the police. There's just really no way for him to escape with all of these officers around him. This predator's intended victim will sleep safe tonight. That's it, it's all over. Coming up on police videos. In excess of 120. A man with a death wish threatens to take an entire town with him. I need some help, folks. Next. A fleeing crook knows that an officer's primary concern is public safety. And some felons try using that to their advantage, thinking that the more they risk innocent lives, the faster they'll win their freedom. Little Rock, Arkansas, and possibly the most hair-raising pursuit that these officers will ever see. State troopers began chasing the stolen car the moment it hit the interstate. But the suspect fled across the median to where only fools would follow, straight into oncoming traffic. Now he's racking his car back and forth, taunting the officers and threatening to smash innocent civilians head on. Speed's not at 100 miles an hour. He thinks that if he can create enough havoc behind him, the troopers will be forced to call off the chase. Even in the face of two semis, he keeps up his defiant charge. Somehow, he squeezes through. Fueled by bravado, he pushes even faster. In excess of 120. Troopers struggle to head him off, but he's going too fast. He blazes past one patrol car. Then another psychotically swiping at civilians as he passes. By now, he's left behind a 25-mile wake of chaos. And it's about to catch up with him. He spots troopers ahead, then slams on his brakes and swerves between a car and a semi. The insane maneuver avoids the spike strips, but sends him hurtling into a ditch on the far side. Unmarked units cross the median to trap him. Incredibly, he manages to break free. His car begins to crumble as he races unopposed into a patch of open road. Then, he sees why there is so little traffic. He veers back across the median and into the eastbound lane, narrowly avoiding the ultimate roadblock. Now on the right side, he continues to charge forward as if he's unstoppable. Other drivers have no time to prepare for this high-speed road hog. I need some help, folks. I'm behind him. running about 90 to 100. Up ahead, the suspect sees his opportunity to leave the trooper behind. He breaks away down the right shoulder. The semi-driver unwittingly creates a rolling roadblock, hoping the reckless maniac gain precious distance. By the time the trucker is able to pull over, the suspect is only a speck on the horizon. But the trooper is not alone. Up ahead, an unmarked unit has joined the chase. The suspect becomes even wilder, dodging all over the asphalt. 
desperately trying to place any distraction he can between himself and his pursuers. But the troopers are relentless. The suspect continues to push his stolen car to the breaking point. But the road ahead will give out even faster than his car. The merging lanes ahead pinch the suspect into an impassable bottleneck. He lunges back into the median toward the other side. And the battered car careens out of control. The suspect skids off screen into a guardrail. Incredibly, he's still able to run on foot. After a brief struggle, the wild road hog is hog tied and is carried back in custody. This suspect ran with the fearlessness of a madman, blazing a trail of terror across 50 miles of interstate. Made in excess of 120. He kept trying to bully his way to freedom, even in the face of disaster. But he pushed his luck to the end of the road. And now that the dust is cleared, he'll have to face the consequences of his high-speed chaos in a court of law. Criminal action affects us all. This guy is crazy. It spills onto our streets and into our neighborhoods. Most criminals don't care about the impact they make, as long as they get what they want. That's why officers are out there every day. Oh, look out! Fighting to make sure that crooks get what they deserve.